Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we got more bad news for journalists. I know you guys love to love to hear it. Uh, you love to hear it. We did a video yesterday talking about how a bunch of journalists are getting laid off and they're trying to pivot to uh, YouTube and TikTok. And now we're going to talk about one of the biggest news groups out there basically giving their writers busy work until they fire them. Um, I mean, the plus side is it gives them time to go find something else. Yeah, I mean, I will give them that because a lot of times you get laid off, there is no heads up whatsoever. You have to kind of figure it out for yourself that you're not going to have a job for very long. But this reminds me very much of what could be happening right now at Kotaku. Remember oh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, Kotaku got really, really mad that they were told that they had to pivot to just doing uh, game guides. Why? Well, game guides are evergreen content and it's also busy work. It's not like super, you know, time sensitive, whatever. And the company that owns Kotaku is Geo Media. They've already sold off several of their other sites and they're probably looking for a buyer for Kotaku, which may or may not include the current staff, you know, going, going with them. And at the rate they're going now, writing hit pieces and trying to uh, stir shit up with gamers on social media, uh, getting rid of them sooner rather than later is probably a really good idea. Or you're going to get yourself in another lawsuit like they did with Deadspin. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Not a lot of woohoos at, uh, at Condé Nast. They said, yeah, while the union negotiates with, with uh, top execs about the scale and terms of their layoffs, employees who had been working at GQ, Vanity Fair, and Bon Appetit have been consigned to a unit that sources say mainly includes just busy work. Like this is kind of like in school when you get done with your work early and then you just sit there and color until kind the other of. kids. Well, I'm sure they're giving them something that's not coloring, but still. It said for roughly 100 workers who have joined Condé Nast's central editorial group, work has taken a bizarre turn in the last few months. Um, in November, 94 union staffers at the glamorous media company behind Vogue G glamorous behind Vogue GQ, Vanity Fair, and Bon Appetit learned that they were probably going to be laid off. They're earmarked for layoffs. The cuts wouldn't happen immediately uh, because of the union, because News Guild of New York affiliated union didn't yet have its first contract in place. Uh, they said they had an uneasy deadlock in January, which got them more time. But now they're all being booted over to this uh, busy work office, I guess. They centralized support team. Centralized support team. So, yeah, dead, dead journos walking base. Not literally dead, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you're, you're done. You just, yeah, the overall group is called the subject of confusion. One source says it's the centralized support team. Uh, writers say they belong to the central editorial team. It's a big difference. Company had referred to the larger group internally as Central Editorial Group. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? This is where we're. This is the holding. Pur they call purgatory. This is the holding cell where we're going to keep your asses until we figure out how to get rid of your asses as cheaply as possible. I guarantee you that is what is going on at Kotaku right now because it did not make sense for them to pivot to game guides right after they got sued by the family of that kid that they slandered on Deadspin, which is one of their sister sites. And then they sold Deadspin, kind of a fire sale. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey guys, yeah, don't write news anymore. Just write game guides. You're in the central game guide group. A few months later, nine additional workers were added to the list and you got sent to the, this is like the breakfast club. What's like interesting to me? It was awkward enough for employees to list to remain the company for months. Why did you? Why did you? If it was awkward and you think you're being you're you're being marked for for layoff, why yeah. did you not just go try to find another job? <sighs> there were the new tasks they were assigned. According to group members who spoke with the Hollywood Reporter, work for some of the, some of the uh, consists of writing summaries of Condé Nast's previous coverage of various topics and cultural significance profiles of public figures. On the video side, it's involved identifying favorable timestamps and past event coverage for sizzle reels. It's so weird. I can't emphasize how weird it is, says former GQ article editor Chris Gay O'Malley. He calls the state of the last few years or last few months a purgatory. Again, why are you still there? Um, because they need the job and they don't want to leave willingly. I think they're basically moving the stapler. They're giving them, you know what I'm saying? But what they're giving them, the work they're giving them, it sounds like the work that they would give to an intern. Well, sometimes they're trying to get them to quit. Yeah. They said they're calling up the rubber room. <laughs> oh, my God. As the union and company remain locked in contentious labor negotiation, they said, yeah, 
they're calling it the rubber room. The work has been wrote. Some respected writers and editors recently at prestigious publications still being paid their full salaries from their previous That's roles. Why. But they're moving their stapler. They're working on summaries of how Condé Nast publications have covered female film directors best. Yeah. So what they're doing is they're probably giving them a list of like, okay, these things are kind of trending and, and search. So just do some like SEO optimized shit and take some of our past videos. We're not going to have you do any new content. Just take our past videos and chop them up into shorts. You know, again, this is the kind of work that an intern would typically do. They're being treated like interns and they probably do want them to quit. I like this. Okay. You have to kind of, you, you kind of have to laugh to keep from crying because it's such a waste of everyone's time and energy and talent. Delia K, formerly a senior vanities correspondent for Vanity Fair. Oh my God. So yeah, you're basically, we're not getting rid of you yet because we can't trust me. If, if you guys weren't unionized, you'd be out the damn door. We can't get rid of them yet, but we can just give them a bunch of non-tasks and maybe they'll get bored or insulted and leave on their own or they'll take the hint and go get another job someplace well, else. They even said the one person's doing um, stuff for the GQ's TikTok channel, which currently has over 1 million followers. That's not very much and it's really, really, really easy to buy TikTok. Oh, um, yeah. They said uh, current assignments is the stuff I used to do when I was an intern at Post yes. Houses in college. Yes. That's exactly what this is. They're, they're basically trying to demoralize them, I think. Oh, yeah. Morale, according to those in the union, is very. There are those who are insulted and or checked out. There are others who, while facing the, uh, the reality of tedious work, that is a demotion from past roles, acknowledge some gratitude to have the space and financial stability to plan their next right. move. Right. That's it. They have time to find something else. Yeah. I mean, I Most will. Most places I, wouldn't have done that. Hell no. I mean, I've been in places where everything's fine. And then Monday morning you come in. They're like, yep, everybody's got to be out of here by noon. You know? Uh, the tasks they've been assigned apparently aren't particularly time sensitive. So yeah, it's just busy work. This is this is stuff that they were probably going to eventually get around to doing. They just didn't have the free time to do it, and they're not going to give them anything that that's a long term task. You know, we're not going to have you do you know three months of investigative reporting because you're not going to be here in three months if we have it our way. Uh, some are skeptical or have lost hope. Others believe they could eventually get their old jobs back. Because of the bullshit the negotiate something back. Yeah. I don't think that's, that's why you're in the rubber room. This is our first contract. It's going to inform layoffs in the future. And so the set of layoffs is going to be really important for that. I, I think, I think that they're trying to figure out how to get rid of you. They're trying to figure out how to get rid of you as cheaply as possible. And again, if you were not unionized, you already would be out the door. And in a lot of cases, what they'll do, I mean, they're paying you anyway. I guess that's the thing because if you buy somebody out, you have to pay them. I had a boss who was costing the company money because he was so bad at his job that they bought out his contract. They had to, the guy had like a two or three year contract and they had to buy him out. So he got paid to leave basically because it was cheaper to just give him his salary for the next year or so than it was to uh, keep him at the company where he's going to cost the company a whole lot more money. Mm -hmm. And I think in this case, they're like, well, we got all this busy work. We got to get done just to have them do the busy work because the other option is they give them their salaries and they don't do anything, you know, and that's probably what they're thinking. Like, we'll just give them something to do. Well, We're paying said, for it. Ultimately, if the union's position holds, members of the centralized group will have to wait a, for a full agreement to be reached to know how they will move forward. If any jobs will be saved, the amount of severance and what there could be any voluntary buyouts or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this, and they're talking about like all these, these places are laying off and you know, again, if they weren't unionized, they'd be out the damn door. I think this is a hundred percent what's going on at Kotaku right now. I think they're shopping Kotaku around. I don't think they've had any buyers or the offers weren't very good or whatever. Nobody wants it because it is a toxic, uh, brand at this point, And it has, has no credibility with with gamers but i think the reason that they shifted them to game guides is it's their their version of busy work like we can't just shut the site down we can't just fire these people because I, I think they are unionized they're in the geo union they're like well we and we got to keep the traffic kind of sort of up because if we're going to sell it we got to show that it performs so yeah just do some game guides whatever is popular right now you know some breath of the wild whatever which is kind of pointless anyway because People are getting more and more of that information from videos. They're not, you know, they're not, they're watching, you know, playthroughs and walkthroughs and stuff. They're not yeah. reading this stuff. So yeah, that's what I think is going on. Pretty interesting stuff though. Are uh, we going to wrap this up? Yep. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.